Well, it's the month of March, and we have been sharing some amazing stories. March is the month of stories of life change. I hope that you've really been enjoying all the amazing testimonies of people that are, attend our church here at Epic Life. We have some amazing people today with the most powerful story. You are going to be so blessed. We have Richard and Erica Faustino. Would you help us welcome them? And we're so glad that they're here. We go a, a long way. We back a long a way. Years. We've done them for several years, and they have an incredible story of what God's done in their lives. Amen. 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 You, know, you guys have been Epic Lifers for quite a while now. Uh, mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us how you guys met? Uh, how long have you been married? And how many kids you have? Would you like to say? <laughs> okay. Well, we uh, we met we met in Miami, Florida, a okay. long time ago. All right. Many, many. She was thirteen, I believe. I was about seventeen. Um, uh, and then I'll just jump to the, we got married and had three, uh, two kids. Um, and we've been married for 18 years. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, but there's more to the story. I there's mean, a lot if, more yeah, there's a lot. So if, if I go back and let's say in Miami, I was born in Boston, Massachusetts, moved to Miami when I was four. I uh, grew up kind of going to church all my life, pretty much. Most of my life, my parents, my grandmother was a Catholic and taught us the Ten Commandments. So we learned, you know, that was our part of our life growing up. Later on, uh, a friend invited us to church, to a Christian evangelical church, and where my parents gave their lives to the Lord. And the whole family changed. Everything changed. Um, so years later, we end up going to the uh, same church. And um, I met her parents, which are amazing people. Uh, I love them very much. And w after we met, it w she was uh, back in those days. I'm 17. She's 13. It was there was nothing there. We were just friends. And she was a little kid to me <laughs> at that time. And um, anyway, so life goes on. I got ended up getting married later on, 21 years old uh, with someone else. And uh, went through some hard times with the church that I was in. Um, I got brokenhearted, a uh, lot of hurt, a lot of anger, resentment. Um, so I went off and I went into a different lifestyle. I just ran from God as hard as I could. I mm. uh, was mad at the whole church uh, for treating me the way they did, or at least what I felt. Um, I felt abandoned and uh, just betrayed and started drinking started to use drugs from not at all i was 24 by that time started drinking and using drugs and um about at the age of 30 i uh, was invited to a men's retreat by my sister uh, she was praying for me and um yeah sorry i get a little emotional but uh, remembering that but um so i went to the retreat i don't know why i said yes she invited me i went and came back and uh, while I was there I felt the Lord showed me her in, in a vision like in my mind I don't know we were doing an exercise all guys and her name popped you know in my head and I'm I'm seeing her so I start crying by myself with all these men around me and I I didn't want to say what I saw because I was just freaking out my own self <laughs> anyways got back to church on a Sunday and I thought, okay, that was just crazy. That was, you know, my, I was inventing things. So anyways, we, and she, I get off the stage, she's there and she says hi to me. Oh, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm freaking out now <laughs> and, um, leaves. And then at the end, she gives me her phone number. So from that moment on, we started dating, uh, about a week later. Um, and she knew about my story. She knew about my, what happened in my life and things I was doing. Um, and I, I thought I was doing great. It was a few months of being sober. And so about five or six months later, we get married. Um, and I didn't realize that I was dealing with addiction. And that was a whole different thing. And um, so I ended up using again. Um, she didn't know. I hid it from her for about a year and a half. Mm. Um, and eventually just got really bad. Um, where our marriage was falling apart, I was uh, I couldn't stop, and um, I didn't know. Kids already. Yeah, and we had we two had kids two by that time. time. My last two, and it was it was really hard because a part of me was really wanting to be a good father, a good husband, but I felt like I couldn't get away from the addiction that I was dealing with. I didn't even know I was dealing with it until about 
almost two years later mm-hmm. of us getting married. And that's when I call, I cried out to her and, um, God started doing something in my life, but it was just like a beginning. I know a lot of people that deal with addiction. We, you know, sometimes get to like these hills where we think we're doing great. And we had a, a month of sobriety and it's mm-hmm. awesome. And then you fall again and then, you know, you feel so horrible and then guilt and all that. And you just do it again and again. And it was a roller coaster until about another, I, I don't want to know how many months after that, when you, you, you told me one day, my wife told me she wanted to go to Metro life church in Miami mm-hmm. and she's going to go there. So she started going and she's so, praying so for me. I love this story. I have <laughs> to ask because your story is incredible. We, you shared it with us before. Yeah. It just, I mean, it, it's so powerful. But I wanted to stop you for a second. Hold mm-hmm. that thought. I think a lot of people would benefit from hearing your side of the story. How did you handle going through that situation where you've got two small children, your husband is an addict, he finally comes to you? What, what was the struggle like for you? So when we... Um When we got married, we both had kind of similar stories because we lived that worldly life. So I was kind of like the party girl. Also, you know, God saved me from that. And we knew each other from youth group back in the days. Now we're adults. So, you know, we reconnected and um, everything happened, as he was saying, with the story where God, you know, was kind of saving us at the same time, not knowing that there was going to be a story that was going to come together out of both of us Mm -hmm. here. Um, So we both started walking with the Lord, um, met each other. He was everything I was praying for. You know, at the time I had been praying for a husband because I had been, you know, dating around and obviously not finding the right guys. And so, you know, I was praying for a godly man. Mm -hmm. So we we met at church, got together. And of course, the last thing I expected was to get married and we were going to be dealing with this, you know, situation. But um, I think that when I was going through it, there was days that I wanted to just run away and just leave. But something kept me there. And I think it was the Lord. Yeah. Um, We had our kids and, you know, one of my dreams was to be a mother and to raise my kids with my husband, you know, their father. So I think a lot of prayer and um, starting to find the right community, like he said, we started going to Metro Life Church. That's our family church. That's our sister church in, in, Miami, in Miami. Yes. <laughs> so we started going there, and I started find, uh, finding um, just a safe haven, mm-hmm. you know, because the church we were going to, you know, obviously he had gone through some things, and we just weren't finding right. that right connection. So I found Metro because my brother told me about it. So I started going there and I just started finding that to be my safe haven to go. And I just kept thinking to myself, I need to keep bringing him to church. You know, and there was days that he had been completely like wasted the night before. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, even I had sometimes, you know, just said, you know what, I'm just going to drink too because this is hard. So, um, but I knew that there was something pulling us and it was the Lord bringing us back to him. You know, we're, that seed had been planted from our parents, both of our parents. Mm -hmm. So I just kept having faith in that, in that seed. And then just continuing to go, even though it looked like it was all broken, I just kept praying and asking the Lord to please restore our family and to restore him. And his mom used to tell me, like, please have patience because inside of all that, there's there's a great man. Wow. And I know that. So Wow. Wow. That's what kept me there. I love that. You know, of course my kids your was kids, the number one thing. And you, you said community made the difference in your life. And you shared with us earlier, and I'd love for you to share that, about you know how you were struggling before you knew her. You had gone into um, a season where you weren't drinking, you weren't using anything, and you felt really confident. I think it's what a lot of people that are dealing with addiction that want to find a way out uh, and want help. Well, because you have to get to that moment where you actually want help. And then, you know, it's a struggle still. It, it, I thought it would just be like, well, oh, make a decision and there, I'm good. But when I realized how hard it was because of, you know, thinking, okay, I'm sober now, a few months. And then all of a sudden I got a thought and I would just go for it and I would do it. And I start again and then I get depressed I'm because I'm I'm doing the same thing I used to do, but I don't want to tell my wife and all that guilt over and over. And then, you know, so, and then until I would get better again and then I'd, oh, I'm doing great again. I'm feeling great. Hallelujah. And, you know, pray again, pray one more time and, you know, Jesus take my heart again, you know, and, but 
I think that uh, what happened, one of the last things that happened out of many th events where she thought, okay, this is it, Richard's got it, we're going to be good. Um, she was praying, she was going to Metro Life faithfully every week, and I would show up, I, I told you, Pastor Martha, you know, hiding from Pastor Steve, because <laughs> I was like, he's going to say something yeah. to me. Um, and um, it was funny, because God used him in his mouth to speak to my heart. On a, on a Sunday morning, a few weeks in from going to visit with her, and um, it transformed my life. Um, and about a week later, after another one more event of being drunk and making a promise to God, and I thought, okay, I got this. I'm not going to get drunk. And I did, of course. And, um, you know, God spoke to me and changed my life from that moment on. I mean, I, I literally walked away. Um, not that I didn't go through anything, but unscathed. Like I just, I got out. You said out. you had an encounter with God yeah. in a moment that was different than any other time oh, yeah. that you had tried. Can you explain that a little bit? Oh, wow. The moment I could best describe it this way, I was, I was, um, I was promising to God on that Sunday before I wasn't going to get drunk. I start, here comes Friday night. I buy myself a big bottle of, of, of alcohol. Um, I start drinking it to go to work. Um, and... I'm drinking it and I'm, of course, I'm getting drunk. And then I didn't realize this yet. I'm just doing what I'm doing and eventually drive off. And now I'm starting to look for drugs and I'm calling everyone. Everyone's denying like, Richard, I, I can't help you with that. And I got so mad. Uh, it's, now it's like three in the morning and no one's helping me, or I guess in my mind, you know, trying to help get those things. So I was so angry for the first time ever. And I didn't realize still what I had said the last Sunday or anything. And when I park in front of the place I was going to work at, it, I, I heard, I, I felt like it was like I was watching myself. It was a weird experience because I felt like I was watching myself, but I heard God's voice telling me, are you done yet? Mm -hmm. And, um, Wow. Yeah, that that it it shook my life. Like it, it it was so powerful, so loud. I felt like kind of like when I hear the story of of uh, Paul on the horse and all that thing. It was like that moment to me where I heard him, and I saw all of my life flash real quick, and everything I said at that last week and all that, and it was like. I can't do it without you, you know? So and I realized that was it. I, I, and I just, of course, I bawled. I cried by myself in the car in front of an ATM, <laughs> you know, crying, crying for a long time, repenting. And, and I just said, God, if, you're, if you hear me, then heal me because I can't anymore. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. So and, and from that moment on, it's been 13 years now. That's you know, incredible. that no more drugs or drinking or anything Praise like God. that. Praise God. Yeah, Praise thank God. you, Lord. Man, that deserves thank you, Lord. a celebration. Thank you, Lord. That was your Damascus Road experience. Yes. Yes. Wow. yes. Wow. Yeah. wow, so it was 13, so it's been 13 years. 13 years, yeah. Then. 13 years since then, and, and it's guys, been the best 13 years of my life. We were yeah. in Miami at the time. And we were in Miami. And, uh, and then we were tell going to... Tell us a little bit just, about how you, yeah. you, you left Miami, and now you're in Orlando. Um, how did you find Epic Life Church? Did you hear about Epic it was Life easy. Church? You know, but, and then, you know, what is it about the church, our church, yeah. that made you feel like this is our home church and this is where we want to raise our family? Yeah. Well, I, well, I think when we came here, first came to Orlando, because we were going, to, there was just so many party things going on in Miami that we were trying to get our little kids out of there for, during that time. So we, we ended up moving to Orlando mm -hmm. and we first started going to another church in down South where we live. And, but a part of us kind of like, she always knew like we should be at Epic Life, you know, because we know, you know, this is his family and all that. And I'm just like, ah, but you know, it's just like, it's, we're going to do it just because, and it's far. And it's, and so anyways, one day she started coming and was in my, my wife did with the kids and she's like, honey, the kids love it here. I'm like, I'm like, okay, fine, let's go there. We'll do it. So, and 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 we, I'm so grateful that ever since we got here, we knew we were who we were with, you know, because of you and your sister and you know, Pastor Steve and Dan. I've always saw you guys whenever you guys would go there, and everybody say hi to Pastor Dan and Martha, you know. So it was uh, it was beautiful to be able to finally get to see be with you guys and serve with you. Yeah, and, yeah. And now we're you grateful. serve here. What's serving yes. here like? You work with the kids ministry. You work so. I mean, you do so many. Things. What's What's it like to serve at Epic Life? Yes. How would, what would you tell somebody? That? I mean, so for, for me, it's just second nature. You know, once you're part of the family of God and you've been going to church, you know that you need to also give back. And in giving, it's also serving. Right. That's always been instilled in me since I learned it um, back in Metro Life Church. And so um, that's just 
how I feel, no matter yeah. wh- where I'm at. Like if I'm at church and that's a gift that God has given me, um, then I have to just use it, you know, and if it's with children's ministry, if it's with check-in, whatever it is, you know, I just want to be a part of that. And so does my family. Mm-hmm. So I knew that when we came through these doors and the kids also from the first day, they were like, yes, this is it. This is yeah. home. This is where they wanted to as immediately start serving. They yes. wanted to be part of the youth and, you know, it. they love Nicole and Danielle as well. So mm-hmm. it's just been great. So it's so incredible to see how both of your children serve. Angelina serves on the worship team. They're both a part of wildlife, our youth mm-hmm. um, ministry. And then we see Christian just serving in different areas of the ministry. I love to see you and I pull up on Sunday mornings and you're out there and you're <laughs> setting up signs and blowing leaves. We need a little bit of help for that too. <laughs> um, but you always have a big smile on your face. You both are such encouragers and we love you. Epic you. Life Church. We wouldn't be the same without you. And I just want to say from Pastor Dan and I, thank you so much for yes, being so raw yes. and transparent Pastors. and sharing your story. Mm-hmm. And I know it's going to impact the lives of so many people thank you. and you're going to see thank the you. fruit of it. Amen. We love you guys. Thank you. We love you. Love you too.